Robert Louis Stevenson was born here in Scotland on the 13th of November 1850. He was the author of many beloved and well-renowned stories such as Treasure Island. In May of 1878, a close friend of Stevenson's and Edinburgh-based French teacher Eugene Chantrell was arrested out of nowhere for the murder of his wife. Stevenson knew him to be a well-respected and by all accounts a normal man. In the courtroom, however, Stevenson watched and listened as the evidence was laid out of how Eugene took out a thousand pound life insurance policy against his wife before poisoning her with opium. This duality between the outward public man that he knew, contrasting with the inner monster he didn't, was likely the influence for the novel Robert would later pen over the years following Eugene's execution by Hannon. Welcome to Pixel Pantheons where we explore the tropes, genres and characters that have formed the video games that we love. For our inaugural video, we're taking a look at the character of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, a character we are all familiar with, but is surprisingly underutilised in the video game space. We'll take a look at the original story, as well as the big screen adaptations which influence other visual mediums such as video games. If you want to jump straight to the video games however, you can use the timestamps below. The majority of the strange case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde takes place from an outsider looking in narrative, with Dr. Jekyll's perspective only revealed during the last chapter of the book roughly. As we are looking at the character of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde specifically, we'll just take a look at this section of the story. Dr. Jekyll himself narrates about how he became obsessed with separating the two parts of a human, the good and the evil, the man and the animal. After years of research, Jekyll finally invents a potion that will allow the drinker to do so. Upon taking the potion, and after a painful intake of that potion, it left Dr. Jekyll feeling younger and more vigorous. This came at the cost of a hunched and hideous appearance. Eventually, Dr. Jekyll fully embraced his new alter ego, Mr. Hyde, and set up a house and bank account in his name. One night, Dr. Jekyll transformed into Mr. Hyde during his sleep without the need of the potion. Scared at the notion of possibly permanently becoming Mr. Hyde, he swore to never drink the potion again. Slipping off the wagon two months later, however, Jekyll gave in to the urge to drink the potion, and in his Mr. Hyde form, he murdered a man in the street called Sir Danvers Carew, a member of parliament. After this, Dr. Jekyll stops taking the potion completely. However, one day Jekyll was caught up in a narcissistic thought while daydreaming in a park, causing Dr. Jekyll to turn into Mr. Hyde in broad daylight, and is hunted by the police for the death of Sir Danvers Carew. Needing the potion to turn back into Dr. Jekyll, he sent word to his friend Lanyon to break into his laboratory and bring him the ingredients needed to contrive the potion. He does so, and Lanyon watches as the potion turns the stranger called Mr. Hyde into his friend, Dr. Jekyll. Some time later, the shock of this kills Lanyon. Now needing to consume his potion every six hours, Jekyll sends his manservant, Mr. Poole, out to collect the regular ingredients he needs for the potions. However, future batches of the potion appear to be ineffective. Jekyll surmises that one of the original batches' ingredients must have had an impurity which led to the success. Unable to recreate the potion and face a life permanently in the form of Mr. Hyde, he writes out a confession while locked away in his laboratory. When Mr. Hyde gains control, he faces the prospect of life in prison or execution. As such, he chooses to drink poison rather than be hanged. There have been dozens of filmed adaptations of Dr. Jekyll on the silver screen. I'll briefly highlight some of the more notable ones. The first full-length feature was a 1920 silent movie released by Paramount and starring John Barrymore. The film follows the narrative of the story very well, but adds the character of Jekyll's fiancée Millicent which is not mentioned in the book. The 1931 version starring Frederick Marsh was also produced by Paramount Pictures and had a surprisingly good transformation sequence for its time. The movie went on to be nominated for three Academy Awards, with Frederick Marsh winning the award for Best Actor. It's worth noting that the finale of the movie sees Hyde being shot and killed by police rather than by his own hand. The 1941 version produced by MGM is rather similar to the 31 version, with Mr. Hyde portrayed more menacingly by Spencer Tracy, but less physically ghoulish than in other adaptations. The 1960 Hammer Horror production retitled itself to the two faces of Dr. Jekyll. The transformation of the two, portrayed here by Paul Massey, with only a beard to identify between the two, which is a little disappointing. What little Jekyll films we got in the 70s and 80s were usually either sleazy, exploitative or just generally not noteworthy. In 1996 we got Mary Riley, starring Julia Roberts as the titular character. Mary here is the maid to Dr. Jekyll and the film is entirely from her perspective. Dr. Jekyll is portrayed by the impeccable John Malkovich. Although the film failed critically and commercially, I like this film and appreciate the perspective shift 
to be closer to that of the book. In more recent years, Mr Hyde has appeared as a side character on the big screen, first in 2003's League of Extraordinary Gentlemen as one of the assembled cast, and in the following year in Van Helsing with Hugh Jackman hunting him down as part of his character's introduction. The 1988 release for the Nintendo NES is widely regarded as one of the worst NES games that came out for the system. The game starts with Dr Jekyll running late to his own wedding. His bride-to-be is Millicent, which is taken from the 1920 silent movie, with the entire village causing damage to Jekyll as he moves along the levels. Many players mistake the villagers to be attacking or harming Dr Jekyll for no reason, but if you read the manual of the game it states that the damage is stress and the villagers are obstacles, like walking down a busy street in a city if you will. On that line of thought, this could be an early example of a sanity mechanic in video games. Whenever Dr Jekyll takes too much stress, he becomes Mr Hyde, in a hellish version of the town populated with monsters rather than villagers. As Mr Hyde is navigating the same levels as Dr Jekyll, albeit a mirrored version, there is the possibility that Hyde will catch up to where Jekyll was. If this happens, the game is over, and Hyde takes control of the body forever. However, if or when Hyde defeats enough enemies, he becomes Jekyll once again and his stress levels subdued, have invented. The two characters do share a health bar and if depleted they lose the game. If we want to connect some dots here, since stress causes heart attacks, maybe this is the in-game canonical way the character dies. The game ends if or when the player reaches the church for the wedding. This last level is the only time Hyde can overtake Jekyll on the level, and which character reaches the church first dictates the ending. Dr Jekyll's ending sees the wedding go ahead as scheduled, the bad ending, Jekyll arrives at the church and the bride has fled. I had a shot of this text-based adventure released in 1988. Honestly, me and text-based adventures have never gone hand in hand. I always find myself typing in commands that simply don't compute for the game. As such, I didn't get far in the game for the purposes of this video. I was impressed with what I did see however, such as the passage of time with clocks progressing as you explore Dr Jekyll's home as well as the quality of the writing, with one green screen dream sequence of particular note. Other than this, I can only highlight the game's existence if text-based adventures are your cup of tea. This action platformer released in 2001 for PC takes a lot of liberties with the source material, giving Dr Jekyll a daughter from the offset, and having Jekyll work out of an insane asylum. The game starts with the asylum being run amok by escaped patients, and Jekyll's daughter being kidnapped by a patient called Burwell. We learn that the game takes place after an alternate version of the Robert Louis Stevenson story, where Jekyll proverbially killed Hyde at the end. Burnwell demands Jekyll bring back Hyde in exchange for his daughter. Additionally, a man in the mysterious burn mask claims to be holding Burnwell's strings, and commands Jekyll and Hyde to bring a mysterious book to him by dawn, or else his daughter will be killed. The book is being kept in London and requires three metallic pieces carried by three people in the city, who Jekyll must track down accordingly. And that's the setup for the game that unfolds across just under 8 hours of gameplay. Mechanically, as Dr Jekyll, you can use your cane to swipe at enemies, with stealth being an option if you approach enemies slowly from behind. When Mr Hyde is introduced, he moves faster and more animalistic than that of Jekyll, almost ape-like with his swing and arm attacks. You can transform between the two by combining Dr Jekyll's potion with water that can be found in certain places throughout the levels. These are few and far between, however, skewering most of the gameplay towards Dr Jekyll rather than Mr Hyde, and give it more of a scripted feel rather than player's choice of preference. The art style is of particular praise here however, taking influence from German expressionist cinema and or Tim Burton movies, like a mad mashup of Psychonauts and American McGee's Alice. The latter of those two by the way I'll be covering in a future video if you care to like and subscribe. The voice acting is pretty on point also, with everyone sporting convincing English accents. Beyond this, the game is weighed down by its clunky platforming and awkward camera controls. The game is now abandoned with however, so if you don't mind games that are a product of your time, it's easy enough to give this a try for yourself. I have avoided spoilers, just in case you care to do so. This game is very elusive, and I'm afraid I won't be able to give any in-depth details as I've personally not been able to access the title. The game does not appear to be available anywhere online, including abandonware sites, and there are virtually no videos of the game on YouTube. The worst part is, I think this game looks and sounds really cool from what I've seen. The premise is in 1894 when an epidemic breaks out among the lower class areas of London, killing all adults but not the children. Determined to find a cure, Jekyll stumbles upon his infamous formula, but does not stop his quest to put an end to the epidemic. The game plays in a point and click fashion and you are able to control the movements of Dr Jekyll using a click and drag mechanic with your mouse. 
Outside of navigation, you can combine collected items via the menu system, allowing you to solve puzzles and even create Dr. Jekyll's potion required to become Mr. Hyde. Speaking of which, when you're in Mr. Hyde's form, you have access to additional abilities, such as traversing gaps and moving boulders. I quite like the style of the cutscenes for the game, hand-drawn cartoons like that of the period, and animated like paper puppets. The voice acting is also shockingly good, at one point I turned away from my monitor and I thought I was listening to an audible audiobook. The pre-rendered backgrounds and the assets of the game aren't anything to scoff at either, being quite clear in appearance. The game experiments with its camera angles, from fixed perspectives to third person to even side-scrolling. However, one major drawback is the character animations are completely lacking. Almost shocking to be honest, bogging down what is otherwise a well-presented game. I'm afraid this is all I've got for you at this time. The game has become a bit of a unicorn for me, so I'll be keeping an eye on GOG.com for this in the future. This interactive story was released by Korean developer Grown Seeds. It's part of their Mazum series, which adapts famous stories into interactive stories such as this, though I couldn't find out if Mazum is an abbreviation and if so, what it stands for. Nitpicking the game's title aside here, this game's presentation is fantastic. Highly stylized, like if Professor Layton crossed over with Don't Starve. I also want to give a shout out to the actual composition of the short but sweet soundtrack for the game, although the production itself leaves something to be desired and the songs repeat far too often due to the short length. The game controls via point and click and true to the genre has some puzzles to solve, but this is very skewed to the easy side of difficulty. The game follows the original Robert Louis Stevenson story extremely accurately and being an interactive adaptation of the story takes about the same time to read the original, just under 3 hours. If I was given out an award for most faithful adaptation, this would be the winner. Mr Hyde appeared as the first boss in the 2004 video game adaptation of the Hugh Jackman movie Van Helsing. This level of the video game actually acts as a prologue of sorts to the movie, as we see Dr Jekyll brewing his infamous potion and consuming it, alongside Van Helsing arriving in Paris. The game catches up to where the movie starts with the two fighting in the Belfry of Notre Dame. Mr Hyde is presented in both game and movies more of a ogre or troll than the dark side of man represented in other adaptations. This has been our inaugural video looking into Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde and will probably be one of our shortest videos in the series. To take deeper dives with me into the tropes, genres and characters that have formed the video games that we love, please like and subscribe to this video and help this channel during its early days. Thank you.